Up on the bench today, I have this Dell Dimension 4700 from the year 2004. It's a rather unremarkable Pentium 4 based Dell intended for home use and well, that's about all there is to say about it. This particular one is actually in excellent condition. Most of these that I've seen in the past have been either never cared for, they're packed full of dust, or they've been beat up because they've been moved around over the years. But this one seems to have been spared the fate of most of these, which is, well, a fate of dust and dinginess and capacitor failure, typically. This one I picked up from BCF East this year for $15. It was by far the cheapest one of these Pentium 4 Dells that was even being offered, and coincidentally it was in the best shape, so I really lucked out finding this. And with that said, I'd like to go ahead and show you this thing in all of its glory. Starting up at the front, this 4700 still has its original DVD-ROM drive, which, from what I was able to tell online, is also a CD burner, not a DVD burner. Underneath it is an additional CD burner, 48X CD burner, that of course does not match, uh, added at some point later down the road. And of course, in the rather inconveniently placed, in my opinion, slot on the front is a floppy drive. I understand why they did it for uh, design reasons, but it does seem that you have to reach quite far in there in order to get your floppy disk in and out of the machine. Just an interesting design choice on their part. There are power and hard drive activity indicators on the front as well as the power button. And moving a little bit farther down, the little lip that you see underneath the Dell logo, unlike some later chassis styles or perhaps different chassis styles, is not a movable panel uh, that is simply for airflow, to get airflow into the case. And down at the bottom, in the little oval, there are two USB ports and a headphone jack. Around back is a very wide assortment of ports, just about everything you would have needed back in the day and more. It's got serial, parallel, it's got onboard video, which has been disabled or rather capped off in this case, two PS2 ports, a full assortment of audio jacks, six USB 2.0 ports on board Ethernet. Down below at the very bottom is a modem. And then right above that, the reason why the onboard video is capped off is a video card of some sort that I'm sure we will see once we get into the case. On the left side of the computer is the removable side panel. It's got a stamped Dell logo as well as some holes for airflow. And taking these side panels off is usually quite easy, unless they've never been taken off where they're a bit stuck. And the easiest way to do that is to press on this black tab here and then just slide back the panel and off it comes. Very, very easy. Going handheld, let's take a look at the inside of this computer, which is, by the way, the absolute cleanest one of these Dells I have ever seen. I've seen maybe 50 of these. I've worked on them at the computer store I used to work at, and every one of them completely packed full of dust. All the capacitors are blown up. This one has been spared. So um, up front, well, or rather up top, and up front, nothing to speak of. Back of the optical drives, there's the Dell branded power supply, or rather Dell OEM power supply. This has one hard drive in here, and it is indeed SATA. So this was right around the time when Dell started to use SATA instead of IDE hard drives in their systems. Of course, it still does have IDE for the optical drives, as I'm sure that was just cheaper at the time. There's, uh, well, what else do we have to talk about here? Two SATA ports, so there's an option to add an additional hard drive over there on the right. It's got two RAM sticks installed. Let's see if I can figure out exactly what they are in there. It appears to have two 512 meg sticks in memory. The video card, I can't seem to find a label on, but I've, if I had to take a guess, it's probably some sort of ATI video card. I'm not super familiar with the model lineup from that time, but it's most likely an ATI card. And there's a, a modem, don't know who makes it, can't really see it. That looks like Connexon. Tilting up the CPU fan shroud out of the way, reveals zero blown caps, which is really something to see on this model of Dell, or around uh, Dells from this time period especially. They all have blown caps at this point, but apparently this one 
either didn't see very much use or was just somehow spared from the capacitor plague. And as I was saying earlier, how this thing was the cleanest I've ever seen, well, uh, it, it still is, but there is quite a lot of accumulation on that CPU fan, uh, or on that CPU heatsink. So I will have to give this a dust out at some point. The 4700 is now set up and I have a matching, but not 100% period correct Dell monitor with it, along with my white Dell keyboard and kind of off-white Dell mouse that's out of frame. Let's see if we can boot it up and get into BIOS. Easy as that. And here we are in the BIOS setup utility. This BIOS version seems to have been updated since this computer was new. It's running version A10 released in 2006, which uh, is much newer than the 2004 release date of the computer. Scrolling down to processor info, we see not really what I expected, which was a three gigahertz Pentium 4 CPU. Now, as far as I was able to tell online, this thing only ever shipped with a three gigahertz. I could be incorrect, there could be other options available when this thing was purchased, but it's possible that this was not a Pentium 4 2.8 all of its life and was downgraded or something um, to a 2.8, or maybe it just came with one, I don't really know. Memory info, as we saw before, it's got two 512 meg sticks. This can take up to a maximum of two gigs of memory. Clock battery is surprisingly still working. Taking a look at drives, this has the original 160 gig Maxtor drive, SATA drive, that it shipped with. No hard drive too. It's got uh, two optical drives installed. However, one of them doesn't really give any information. It appears to have been turned off. Let's turn that one back on and see what it says later on. And the brand of the second optical drive is an OptoWrite. CDRW drive. Never actually heard of that name before, but we'll see if it actually works still. Taking a look lastly at the event log in here, nothing much to mention, just a bunch of keyboard errors from over time. It looks like the last time there was a keyboard error was in 2019, perhaps maybe when this thing was last used, who knows, and the first entry being log area cleared in 2005 which may have been when this thing was deployed at first. It was a 2004 model, wouldn't have been uncommon for it to sit around for a little while. So it appears that uh, July 23rd, 2005 was when this thing was put into service. And that is one month away from being 18 years ago, which is pretty crazy to think about. Now I will admit I've already gone ahead and installed Windows XP on here because Nobody needs to sit through a Windows XP installation. The entire process went as you would expect. I put the disk in, I formatted and installed Windows. And uh, after some configuring of drivers, I had to download the drivers. We were eventually greeted with a fully drivered up and working Windows XP install. And here it is. Really nothing special. And I'll make the text a little bit bigger. Go down to, uh, let's, let's do 800 by 600 to make it big enough to see on screen. There we go. So take a look at the specs on the system, even though we already know what they are. Uh, it's running Windows XP Pro Service Pack 3. This would have originally shipped with Home, but I had a Pro install available. Pentium 4 2.8 with 1 gig of RAM. The video card, because I was curious what it was as well, is indeed an ATI video card, and it's a Radeon X300. With how much memory? I don't really remember. And that's not where I look to do that. I have to look in here, Properties, Settings, Advanced, and this has 128 megs of dedicated VRAM. So, pretty capable card. Uh, maybe not really a gaming card, but useful for most things and some light gaming. The onboard ethernet is only 100 megabit. I know I missed this driver, but it doesn't really matter. And uh, didn't load the driver for my display, but that's all right. So that is uh, the basics. 
of this system. Let's see if this actually works. I don't think I ever got this working. I tried to copy Grand Theft Auto 3 to it because I played a lot of Grand Theft Auto 3 back in the day, but uh, something went wrong with the file copy, so didn't actually get that going. So that has been the Dell Dimension 4700. I'll be keeping this around for indefinitely, I guess. I was going to say a long time, but I don't really have any plans to get rid of it. I bought this because it's one of the last Dells that doesn't feel too modern uh, as far as design language goes, especially. But it's also old enough that it's something that I would have used back in the day at friends' houses, for example, browsing the early internet. It's kind of a nostalgia machine for me. And if I need a more powerful Windows XP machine than what I have currently set up, uh, this would be a very good option. 2.8 gigahertz Pentium 4 is quite a powerhouse for most things. This has a graphics card in it, which I believe was PCI Express, so that could be upgraded to something else pretty easily. And with two gigs of RAM and Windows XP, you know, that's a, a pretty rockin' setup. So if you guys have any ideas of what you'd like to see me do with this Dimension 4700, please let me know. I'm keeping a Excel spreadsheet full of video ideas for things that I've shown on the channel or things I'd like to show, and I would gladly add to that list and do what I can to make those videos happen. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next video.